TLO was popping. We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This is um, above me where you can catch any of the live highlights if there's anything good. Um, they will be here. Don't forget, we also got the Patreon. This is an up to date list of everything that's on there currently. We upload every day, one Monday through Friday. I still owe them a movie too, man. I'm trying to get around to it, man. I'll be trying to find the time for it, man. Uh, don't forget, we got merch as well. Check it out if you can. This is the cheapest shirt on there. If you can purchase, if not, I get it. But at least go to the website and look. <laughs> Uh, and don't forget, we uh, got the Discord as well, man. Discord plays a big part on Kick. We're going back on Kick next week, or maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Might be on there tomorrow. Uh, anyway, a case almost too gruesome to mention. Tina Nash, disturbing. This channel crazy. I couldn't even finish the last video. Let's get into it. This case takes place in 2011 in the United Kingdom in a small town called Hale. Hale is located in the southwest of England in a county called Cornwall, which is one of the most beautiful parts of the United Kingdom. If you ever happen to be in the UK, I would strongly recommend a visit. Tina Nash was a 32-year-old woman who lived in Hale. Tina Nash looked good. She looked nice, okay. Hale and was a mother of two. Her two children had different fathers and she had separated from both of them. In 2009, Tina would meet her soon-to-be boyfriend in a nightclub, a man named Shane Jenkins. The if you meet somebody in a nightclub, I'm going to let you know right now, it's not going to work. There, there, <laughs> there's no way you find in love in a nightclub, I'm sorry. Two had actually met a few... It might be good in the beginning, but... Two years before this meeting, but so it's rare. one of Tina's friends had told her to stay well away from him, and even went as far as to describe Shane as a psychopath. This evaluation of Shane wasn't without substance, as around this time, he had been arrested and imprisoned for stomping on someone's head repeatedly, causing serious brain damage. So, Tina listened to her friend's warning and stayed well away. But at this second meeting in 2009, she claimed that Shane seemed to be more mature now and was charming to be around. She assumed that he had now grown up and was a changed man. The two exchanged their numbers and began talking. Before too long, they started a relationship and according to Tina, things were going well in the first couple of months. She told her friends that Shane seemed to care for her and made her feel safe. But this would soon change. After the honeymoon period of the relationship came to an end, Shane began to show his true colours. He became increasingly more violent as time would go on. If Shane was intoxicated, or if she did something to annoy him, he would lash out and call her names, and would even spit in her face. The two would frequent bars- 2023, some girls like that, but you know what I'm saying? Abuse is abuse, it's never gonna change. Nobody can come up out of abuse. Once a dude or a woman hits you, that's forever. They're going to always do it. <laughs> ...and clubs together, and on almost every occasion, Shane would pick a fight with a stranger and beat them. Eventually, things would escalate further. Shane began to hit Tina in front of her children. One time, he punched her numerous times, got on top of her, and tried to push his thumbs into her eyes. I'm going to let anybody know off top, right now. Me and my baby mama, I don't like her like that. But if anybody ever put their hands on my baby mama in front of my child, they might as well just, you know what I'm saying, relocate. Because I'm on your ass forever. <laughs> You're never going to be able to go outside. Take it how you want to. <laughs> and his reason for doing this was because Tina had caught him sleeping with one of her friends and she told him to leave. Thankfully, Tina was able to kick Shane away from her, and he did not continue the attack. There were numerous warning signs showing what type of person Shane was, but somehow he was able to keep the relationship going. 
Around eight months or so into their relationship, Shane beat Tina so bad that she required hospital care. She gave an account of what happened to the police and following the attack, Shane was arrested and charged. But before he was taken to court, he had convinced Tina to forgive him. She told the police that her statement that she had provided to them was fabricated and that her injuries were due to her falling and hurting herself badly. She told the police that she no longer wished to pursue the case further, and so the charges against Fuck. Shane were dropped. Due to this attack, social services became involved, but Tina was able to keep them off her back, which put the children in danger. On the evening of the 20th of April 2011, Shane and Tina spent their day together with her children, and they were all getting along very well. Tina thought to herself that Shane recently had been acting like he was when they had first met. She was hoping that his aggressive side would be a thing of the past. That night at around 10pm, Tina was upstairs in her bedroom trying to sleep, when she overheard Shane having a conversation in the back garden with one of the neighbours. Shane was telling this neighbour that he had been prescribed some sleeping pills known as Valium. Shane asked the neighbour if they would like to take some. Shane then walked back into the house to grab the neighbour some pills. Worried that this could get the social services on her back again, Tina ran downstairs to tell Shane not to give the neighbour any pills. This defiance against Shane angered him greatly. He aggressively swore at Tina and told her to leave him alone. Feeling fed up and disappointed, Tina went back to her bedroom and went to sleep. Then. My name is Shannon. I don't feel like Tina was on the wrong. She was just trying to protect her kids. Tina woke up. She tried to move, but she couldn't. Then, Tina woke up. She tried to move, but she couldn't. She also tried to look around the room, but she was unable to see. Tina is quoted as saying, I tried to get up, but I couldn't move. I wriggled, but I felt like a caterpillar stuck in a cocoon. It's like sleep paralysis. I wriggled, but my arms were trapped by my side, and something was covering my face. Tina had been wrapped up in her duvet so tightly, she couldn't even wriggle free. All of a sudden, Tina then felt a person with two large hands begin to strangle her through the duvet. And of course, this person was Shane. He strangled her so hard that she lost consciousness. After the two had a brief argument over the pills and Tina had gone to sleep, Shane had crept into the room, gotten on top of Tina, and punched her repeatedly until she lost consciousness, and then tightly wrapped her oh, in wow. the duvet. After I was about to say, dang, Tina's a heavy sleeper. How did he wrap her in the duvet that tightly? He knocked her out. For a few moments passed, Tina awoke again. She tried her best to scream for help, but her throat had been damaged from being choked. She was still cocooned in the duvet and was unable to see. Yet again, she tried to wriggle free, but Shane realized that she had awoken and began to choke her until she lost consciousness again. Tina regained consciousness for the fourth time, but this time, she could barely even breathe. Shane was still in the room, and he realized that she had awoken again. Tina could hear him coming towards her again, and managed to muster up the strength to sit upright, and once she did, she said the words, I'm sorry Shane, I love you. Uttering these words was enough to stop Shane from attacking her again. He unwrapped her from the duvet, allowing her to move, but she still couldn't see anything. Every single time Shane had attacked Tina, he never said a word. But after unwrapping her from the duvet, Shane said, Your eye is hanging out of your head. Yo, this dude beat her that bad? I got a head like that? You're never going to see your kids ever again. Stunned as to what Shane had just said, Tina slowly brought her hand up to her face. At this point, she felt no pain, so she was confused as to what he was talking about. But as her hand reached her cheek, she felt her eyeball hanging from her socket. She then reached over to her other eye, 
This one was bulging from her skull and was incredibly swollen. Whilst Tina was unconscious, Shane had dug his fingers into her eyes and gouged them out. Shane then told Tina, All of this is your fault, all this over some tablets. Thinking this must be some bad- I didn't know people actually did that in real life. I thought that was like in a movie type thing, like what Shane is on something different. Dream, Tina again lifted her hand to her cheek. Only to be reminded what was happening to her was indeed real. She was now blind in both eyes. Shin was telling the truth. She would never again be able to see her children. Tina's children were still in the house. She begged Shin not to harm them. She was also worried that they would wake up and see her in the state that she was in. Shin continued to shout, telling her that the fate she had suffered was entirely her fault. Shane then picked Tina up and carried her into the bathroom and dumped her into a bath filled with cold water, resulting in her head being submerged. The cold water against the exposed nerves in her eyes caused an unbearable amount of pain, and as a result, Tina began to vomit and defecate. Tina begged Shane- She couldn't even control her bodily functions and she was in that much pain. Imagine a root canal times a hundred. To let her and her children go, and that if he would, she would tell the police that she was a victim of a random attack and that he had nothing to do with it. Shane just continued to tell her that this was her own fault and that she would not be allowed to leave the house. The pain Tina was experiencing was so intense that she continued to vomit. Tina was able to get out of the bath and make her way downstairs only to hear Shane snoring on the sofa. Tina knew where a hammer was in her kitchen and was sure she would be able to feel around and find it. She contemplated whether or not she should try and retrieve the hammer and attack Shane with it while he slept. Realizing that this was a bad idea, terrible idea, she decided against it. Tina just sat and wiped her nose. But as she did, she noticed it was particularly runny and that the snot was string-like and sticky. As she con continued to pull, she made a disturbing realization. The sticky and string-like substance was not her mucus. Tina had been pulling on her optic nerves and was now holding them in her hands. Hours passed by until Shane awoke from his slumber at approximately 7am. By this point, Tina had been held captive for over 8 hours in an immense amount of pain and fear. Shane got up, walked over to Tina and knelt down beside her. He began to stroke the now dried up eyeball that was hanging down her face and told her again that this was all her fault. After hours of begging, Shane eventually allowed Tina to make a call to a man named Paul. Paul was one of Tina's ex-partners and was also the father to one of her children. Upon hearing Tina's voice on the phone, Paul knew something was horribly wrong, and so he sped over to Tina's house as quickly as he could, and walked upstairs to where Tina and the children were. Shane tried to explain to Paul that two women had attacked her as she was walking home. Paul went into the children's bedroom first to check they were both okay, and then not knowing the severity of the situation, brought them into Tina's bedroom. Ah, he didn't want to do that. Where she was laying naked, covered in her own vomit, with both of her eyes gouged and hanging out. Tina heard Paul and her children and entering the room. She turned her head and desperately tried to hide her face from her kids who were now in the room with her. But as she did, Tina felt one of her eyes fall onto the bed. Paul quickly called the ambulance. Paramedics arrived on the scene and administered some much needed pain relief. After 12 grueling hours, Tina was finally safe. At the hospital, Tina's worst that's messed up, Tina. I'm sorry you had to endure that, man. Yeah. Fears were confirmed. They told her that there was nothing that they could do to save her vision. She also explained that Shane was the one responsible. The police tried to locate Shane, who was now on the run. 
An investigation was soon underway to discover what exactly happened. Shin had tried to hide some of the evidence that would prove that he was the one who did this to Tina. The police found sheets drenched with blood from Tina's eyes at the bottom of the garden. The police also discovered that the wooden panels under the bed in which Tina was sleeping were broken. Shane had used so much force pushing his thumbs into Tina's eyes that he had actually broken the panels. So this is what happened. Whilst Tina had been asleep, Shane had gotten on top of her and punched her repeatedly until she lost consciousness. He then dug his fingers into her eyes as hard as he could before wrapping her in the duvet. Tina then woke up confused and was choked several times causing her to drift in and out of consciousness. As well as suffering the horrific injuries to her eyes, Tina had also suffered a broken jaw and nose. A couple of days later, Shane's location was discovered and he was apprehended by the police. Tina How long in jail he get? Covered in hospital and was assigned a carer to help her with the raising of her children. The trial would begin on the 10th of May 2012. Shane's defense team put forward the case that Shane was suffering from mental health issues and that on this night, Maybe. Tina was the one who had been violent. The Definitely lawyer stated not. that Shane had no intention of harming Tina. Having the audacity to make the claim that the two had engaged in a struggle and that Shane had accidentally fallen on Tina, causing her eyes to be gouged out. Thankfully, the court could see through this rather odd story and Shane was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of six years. Shortly.